can't see in the shark. That's awesome. That's great. This is a shark. Can you pour? Yeah. yeah. Can I get an intro for a minute? Yeah, sure. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want me to say? You're the boss. I'm the boss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Give a theme song to who's the boss. Really? God. Okay. Yeah. Was it? Show me that smile again. Is that it? That's it, or is that groin pains? Yeah. On your crying? Or are you trying? Is it trying or crying? Don't waste on your crying. Don't waste another minute on your cry trying. Or is it groin pains? I think that's groin pains. That's groin pains. Shit. I know Family Matters. That's the one I know very well. Really? Run of course. Run. Run. I can't. I can't <laughs> sing. It's a different right, let him go. I like that. No, I want to hear what you think it is. So you know. Well, Family Matters. Uh, the lyrics are: It's a it's a uh, rare rare condition in this day and age to read any good news on a newspaper page. Love and tradition of the grand design some people say it's even harder to find but there must be some magic clues behind these gentle walls but all i see is the power of dreams real love bursting out of every scene as days go by etc etc there you go yeah, you and you it's, are uh carl winslow <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Is it the deeper love of the family? I think that's the chorus. Yeah. You know, I live less than a mile away from the house they use for the intro to uh, to Family Matters. Just just saying. I'm surprised you don't do a tour whenever. That would be the one out. thing it would say on the back of my baseball card. That's the one interesting thing about me. We still don't know who he is. No, we don't. Or what he draws. But you do do you do draw and you do write. Yeah. And you are. Yeah. Hi, my name is Ryan Brown, uh, and I write and draw God Hates Astronauts, and I uh, draw a book called Curse Words, uh, and you are watching Eleven O'Clock Comics. <laughs> You're on a streak, David. Mm. Yeah, he is. Been knocking him out of the park. Mm-hmm. I tried to make a baseball reference the other day in class, and I said, you know, it's like batting a hundred. Oh, did I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, the, the one kid goes, "Bruh." I'm like, all right. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. We won't give you the bruh. Yeah. And this one kid. Um, he he did not apply himself the entire semester, and and didn't show up for most of the semester. And then he became engaged, like the last two weeks of class. And he was very interested about all the work that he missed and getting it done. And he threw it together, in like two minutes. And I called him out in front of the whole class. I said, "Do you know what this work is like?" I said, "This this is is you." I'll, I'll make a golf reference. And they're like, oh, cool. I'm like, this is you picking the ball up and throwing it at the green. And then throwing it at the green again and getting it on the green, just kicking it around with your feet a couple times so you get it in the hole. Technically, you finish the hole. But you did not rise to the challenge of the game. You know nothing about design. And the kid just looking at me like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what? He's like, and he comes, he comes to me after class and he says, um, can you tell me what I'm going to get in the class? Like, what's my grade? And I'm like, my dude, you'd be lucky if you get a C. (laughs) I'm not pulling punches with these kids. And we are not going to pull any punches with you because this is 11 O'Clock Comics, episode 920. And I'm Vince B. You are Vince B. I am David A. Price. This is true. And I am Letron Yap. Wow. You're not Yap. You do do a lot of yapping, though. You're Jason Wood, everybody. Here together. 11 o'clock comics, the good stuff, right? Where do we get the good stuff? From CheapGraphicNovels.com. CheapGraphicNovels.com. Say it with me. Manga, OGNs, trade paperbacks, omnibus editions, all that stuff. Drastically reduced prices. And stick around, because at the end of the episode, I'm going to let you in on a little secret how you can save even more. Massive savings going in. Even more savings going out. CheapGraphicNovels.com 
They're the best. It's been so fun too seeing Max on the socials just giddy with he and his band touring and he seems very happy that the band is back together. Quite oh. literally getting the band back together. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Yep. Yep. It's a trope. Love it. I was thinking for the segment that oh. we usually do after the chit chat in the beginning, we should call it What's Dab Drinking? Oh, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't we? <laughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> Here we go. What the heck is Dab Drinking? True. Tonight it is a uh, a delicious, refreshing gin and tonic. Nice, courtesy of the Bartesian. No, no, mm. no, no. Oh, you actually no, physically I, handled the stuff and made it yourself. I, yes, yes. For this, I did. Wow. Yeah, they don't. Uh, they they don't have a gin and tonic because they don't have they don't have a uh, a capsule with just the tonic because it's carbonated. And it, ah, the carbonation, I got it. Yeah, so. You would think that they would have like maybe a little CO two canister that you can attach to that thing and just squirts in some. No, some if they're fizzy. listening, you might have just given them an idea. Yeah, maybe because you can get CO two capsules like small. Yeah, yeah, yep. I'm baffled that they don't have that. I even have a CO two capsule, like I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about some comics, yo. What do we have, yeah. Jason? Yeah. What what's yeah. what's setting? Your heart a flutter this week, my dude. I I loved, loved, loved Blood Hunt number one. Oh. <laughs> loved it. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh start off strong. No, and I fully acknowledge that it's not for everybody. Like it, it. This is. I was actually gonna before the. Oh boy, I was gonna say this to me is like I enjoyed this in the way that you enjoyed the Carnage books. Like because there's things about them that just make you happy. Even like it's sure. not like, oh, this is the next Watchmen. It's a oh, this is my thing, and that's what this is. So for those that don't know, Blood Hunt is a new mega event at Marvel involving vampires, which of course is the draw for me. Um, now, like with all events, there's the event the book itself, and then there's going to be a trillion tie-ins. I think there's well over fifty tie-ins. There's been, <laughs> so. Yeah, but that's how, but that so it's like one of those events. So like inevitably, a lot of those tie-ins are going to be just ever so slightly tied in. Like you know, whatever the book is, the hero is going to fight a vampire, right? Like that, and it'll be the tie-in. Some will be more tight. Some will stink. Some will be good. You know that that's that's par, par for the course. But Blood Hunt is an event. It's written by Jed McKay, who is these days like the Marvel, the top Marvel guy, right? He's kind of every cyclical every year or two they they give somebody new the 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 you know, the the helm and give him a big event to do, and that's kind of their their coronation, and this is his. He's been writing Moon Knight, he's writing Avengers, of course. Um, and it is drawn by Pepe Larraz, another huge draw for me. So I'm a fan of McKay. I'm absolutely a fan of Pepe. He's one of my favorite modern artists. Uh, and I love vampires. So, like, there was no way I wasn't going to find this book enjoyable, right? Um, and it's just, to me, exactly what I want from a superhero book. It's they they set the tone. Basically, there is all of the characters that wield the Dark Force. And again, for you non-Marvel listeners, the Dark Force is this sort of other dimensional place and, and energy that is uh, it basically is is devoid of, of light. It's pure it's pure black darkness. And lots of different characters uh, can either can control it or, or use it in some ways. Probably the most famous would be Cloak from Cloak and Dagger. He can send people into it. He can travel through it, that sort of thing. But anyway, all of these characters across the Earth are uh, ter- being turned inside out and being turned into basically a, a black holes, if you will, and out spewing, or I guess the black hole sucks things. So whatever would be the opposite of that would be. And it's spewing, they're spewing dark force darkness throughout the, the planet's surface, right? Basically turning everything black. And there's this countdown going on It's where, where it's going to be the total black blackness and everything. Um, and then we are introduced to the main characters who are dealing with this across the uh, across the the uh the 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 story you've got the avengers which these days is uh sam wilson uh iron man thor vision scarlet witch um captain marvel and uh black panther and of course the the avengers would be in this because mckay's writing it uh then you've got the characters from moon knight which i'm not reading but uh tigra and hunter's moon uh who's the other fist of khonshu um then spider-man blade dr strange clea and dr doom so that's who we meet in the first issue on the 
the heroic side. Um, and then, so we've got vampires, we've got Jed McKay, we've got Pepe Raz, we've got the Avengers, and then we got a brand new team of super vampires. And they're fucking badass looking. They're McGrim, cruel and unusual, love it. Uh, Domicene, Smoke Eater, and Bloodstorm 1, who is a clone of Dracula from another story that Hydra made. Uh, and they're basically created to fight the Avengers, and they whoop the Avengers' asses in the first issue. They put a sword through through Thor's skull, which, you know, is not something that is easily done, to say the least. Uh, and then, so then, that's basically the setup, and then um, Strange and Clea are trying to um, cast a very difficult spell kill all the vampires on the planet at once. And Blade is there uh, talking to him, explaining to him what's going on and what's happening. And basically there's a uh, there's a group called The Structure, which has been in some Marvel books for the last few years, a group of vampires kind of behind the scenes. And uh, Blade explains that the, that the group was, was uh, their leader was killed uh, by Moon Knight. And they now have a new leader who has a plan. And that plan includes, you know, again, the Star Force thing, taking out the Avengers and taking over the planet. Um and then the last page, we get a reveal that I did not in any way, shape, or form see coming. So everything that I want in a first issue, I checked. All the checkboxes were like there. It's like, love the art, new, new super team, love it, Avengers, Pepe Lerat, like everything. I was like, okay, yeah, so this is what I want. Now, it's one issue. The the book could go completely astray from here. It could, you know, it could feel super dra- drag, like drawn out, especially if you if you're reading the tie-ins and you feel like I have no idea how I'm going to feel at the end of this thing, but this book made me smile today. Well, that's the DAP seal of approval right there. That's it right. Ma- it made you smile. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right. Well, before you go, Vince. Yeah, please. Um, maybe it's the 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 wrestling mark in me. I'm always waiting for the swerve i can't just enjoy yeah. things these days but there was there was a moment there there, there, there were two moments um the first one i kind of shrugged it off when um the new big bads appeared in the city i was like okay that's kind of fishy but i'm like maybe maybe they intercepted the signal because uh, I was trying to look to see if the rig, if the truck was actually, like, the same. But then when Strange and Clea get a visitor, um, his attitude kind of gave me an inkling that, that, that something just wasn't sitting right. And then the last page kind of confirmed it. Now, I am way behind on the current Blade series that is either just wrapped up or is still going on but um so i don't know what's going on there if that is if, if that was a setup to to this series or if, if there were any clues in there um but i'm not i'm not worried about it. i i just i wanted to read this just to see because yes i mean everything you just said especially with the flipping art but uh i figured i'll give it a shot just to see i'm i'm, I'm definitely not in for everything that they're publishing regarding this event, but I'll read the first issue, see how I feel and, and uh, think about, because even, even with the, uh, if you go to the checklist at the end, like there are a couple of things even before this first issue. So, so obviously this isn't, yes, this is the first issue of the mini series of, of officially kicking off the event, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there were some, some lead ins to, to this, which is fine. It, it's it's Marvel, and I, I appreciate that because it it if if you're a long time reader, if you're reading something that it happens to, then spin out into something larger. That the, the, the that's cool. You kind of rewarded for that, but I really really did. The only thing I I had to catch up on a couple of things because I thought I didn't realize I, I didn't realize until I turned the page that the character's name was Hunter's Moon. I thought that was like a new catchphrase that that that, okay. that Tigra came up with. I'm like, I'm like, is this like her Oh My Stars and Guards? So I'm just like, I don't know where this is, but oh, okay. All right, so that's that dude. Because it, it didn't, obviously, it don't look like Moon Knight, but I'm like, all right, I, I get it. Uh, but I mean, as far, and, and, and because of how quickly and, and methodically the 
the Avengers were, were dispatched, uh, the issue feels like it went by really, like it really was action packed because it, it, you start off, you, you, you've got the sun about to be blacked out and there's a countdown right before. And then right after it, it, it we, we, we get the clock after the entire world is, is, is engulfed in blackness and it, it all moves pretty quick and it was it was done in a way I, I i appreciated the layout because it wasn't there wasn't any confusion really it was pretty easy to follow along all the players who were saying what who was screaming about what scarlet which the, the 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 quips between wanda and tony um i thought i mean jed has has a good handle i think on the avengers i haven't been i i i'm definitely not current on the current avengers run but uh, I thought the uh, everybody sounded how I, I would expect them to sound. So I am I'm I'm I'll be here for the second issue for sure, uh, but I'll have to wait to hear from Jason to find out if there's any any major tie-ins in between the issues. I mean I'm not looking for. To read everything, but like if there's anything that, that 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 that's important before the next issue, I'll uh, I'll keep an eye out for that. But uh, I, I I I did dig it. I I didn't I I didn't. It wasn't one of those situations where I either had you know high expectations or low. I was just going to wing it and, and and see where I land. And I I, I ended up I, I I did like it. I, again, the art's amazing. Uh, the the twist at the end has me really wanting to see how this is going to play out because i like i like the characters i like both characters on the last page so i'm like well shit i don't know i something something's going on in this first issue truly um that they're they're they're, i'm not going to make a sink your teeth into a joke but there's a lot of things here that uh that have me that it's that that sense of like when i was a kid and and uh you get that uh, that excitement for a big event. It, it, this is uh, this had the makings of that. If I was all in on everything Avengers and, and and Marvel these days, I probably would have would have signed up for it across the board. But I wanted to check it out. I'm really glad I did. I, I enjoyed it a lot. You're you're still in my good graces. Go ahead, Vince. I think it alternates between moments of brilliance and ham fisted chicanery. I th- I think the 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 most MVP for me is the Scarlet Witch. I think her character was incredible in this. The the dialogue that she threw at Tony Stark, the robot clothing thing mm-hmm. that she won and it takes a lot for me to to side with the witch. I mean, and and one thing that really got me was that um somebody said I think it was Doctor Strange said that um you know, I would never expect uh no, it was Blade. He says, I already knew that Wanda Maximoff yeah. would never <laughs> cast a spell to ex- exterminate an, an entire people. It's like, dude, did you forget about House of M? I know. I yeah. thought of that too. Like, come yeah. on. And okay, flat out the art is jaw dropping. It's gorgeous. We we established that. The blood coven, the designs are impeccable. The scene in which they premiere is ridiculous it's flat out ridiculous you're trying to get the jump on the most powerful group of superheroes on the planet and you monologue you and you introduce everybody like that's oh yeah. it's bullshit they it, should it, have call outs it's a comic trope though i mean that's it, but know. it doesn't work it does it, it there's there's a reason why modern on writers on don't do that they'll do that they should have like little call outs next to them this is megram or you know what I mean? Like yeah, that's so I simple. Don't I don't disagree with you. I'm sure that was a Pepe like, like, hey man, I, I really could like imagine how much I can get if I could do a full page splash with the new team for the first time. <laughs> right, <laughs> I get it, and it does answer the musical question that I posed way back when when this thing was announced. Like, okay, you're Iron Man, you're encased in a suit of armor. What could a vampire possibly do to you? Well, you, you see in this issue what a vampire can do to him. But I think some of the some of the takedowns are ridiculous. You know nothing's going to happen to Thor. Nothing sure. will happen to Thor. And and I think upping the ante 
like putting a, a spike through Thor's forehead. It may be fun to see, but it's all also it's also like let's see how far we can take this, and then we're going to reverse it next time, right? Again, yeah, that's superhero comics like that. Like it, like, it is, it, but there's a point. Play, play in exactly, but there's a point where it's it, you're 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 numb to it, right? It, there's no, sure. going to be no consequences to this thing. The saving grace of this book is that it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. There, I, I would pay good money. To see a Pepe Larraz, uh Tigra series because I think his Tigra is gorgeous, and I like the little cameo by Doctor Doom. If anybody's going to have like a solar generator to protect their their land, it's Doom, right? True. I I enjoyed it. I just thought it was like mm, I was a little like it. There, it's a little clunky and a little you know schoolyardy in some points, and Thor can be cut and pierced and and. I get the fact that they would want Captain America as a symbol of the country's downfall. That makes total sense. But like all of a sudden the person that that turned is now it just doesn't and and the the last page is just silly. It's well, we'll see if it's silly. It's it's just silly. Well, I, again, this is uh, you said it exactly. This is superhero comics. You're either going to get a rise out of this book, or you're going to be like, yeah, whatever. That's yes, absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if half the people listening say, "I thought it stunk." Wood, Wood said it was great. I thought it stunk. No, I, like, I, like, because it's it's it's. I can think of all the if we go back and think of all the events at Marvel and DC over the last ten years, like they're all extremely formulaic. And if you don't have some kind of extra hook there at these days, to your point there, we talk about this uh, event fatigue, right? You're just like, whatever, like, it doesn't matter. Like, like the last, um, and again, this is no shade. Like I read it the last crisis event, like it was fine, but like we've had so many crisis events. Like it's hard. Like I have, I never, there's never a moment where I tell myself like, Oh, the, the world's really in peril. Right. Like, cause right. I mean, it's, and and that I mean that is the downside of having read super. So I get that. Like I, I'm not expecting anything happening in this book to be like permanent. You know, like oh my god, like you know, of course not. Like that's a given. But I just assume these days, unless because there's no such thing as new com- new superhero comic readers. You know, you just know that going in. So you, it, it, like you need the extra hooks. For me, obviously, it's the vamp- the vampires is the hook for me. Just like when you know you had the DC versus vampires, like. I think I'm the only one that ever talked about that on a podcast on the whole planet. But I, but I really enjoyed it. Like, and again, it was just fucking half the half the DC universe turns into vampires, and like, and that's fun to me. Like, because I love the I love the trope. But yeah, if you're not a vampire fan, this is probably going to be like, oh, here we go, just another big old event to sell books. Like, it's, uh, right. I get it. Well, they're super smart to put Pepe Larraz on it. I mean, if you're going to have an event, you want to you you would hopefully want to make that event look as good as it possibly can. And I think. They've they've rung that bell with this, uh, yeah. so yeah, it's I mean it, it's it's going to be fleeting. Whatever comes out of it is probably going to be reversed um, in due time, probably quickly. I mean, look what they did to, to Hickman's X Men. They they had the best thing going, and now it's totally evaporated. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, it, it wasn't a waste of my time. I, I didn't. I, yeah, I did. I, I, I did enjoy it, but it's just like, yeah, okay, all right. What's next? Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. I, I, this seems perfectly reasonable. Okay, yeah. And we all find the things that silly or not that, like, all right. So with Jason, it's vampires. I mean, Vin, Vince was Gaga over Dark Knight's death metal. It, it, so I mean, we all have those things where it's just like, this is the best thing I read this year, and it's and someone else is going to be like, dude, really, like that. Yeah, so, but yeah. again, with with death metal, the the here we go. The hook is Capullo, <laughs> just like this, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it, if it looks amazing, you could uh, tolerate a little goofiness. There you go. Yeah, see, boom, lock, lock, boom. Yeah. You apparently loved a Marvel book this week, though. I did. Yes, you did. Oh, yes, I did. But we're going to have to talk about that next Sorry. episode. Okay. Yeah, that, uh, okay, that's why. the featured image. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Next episode, we'll talk about that. You got to let us know which which. Episode I was going to, but I completely what? forgot. Uh, I do want to talk about a book, though. We we talked this up. It's a four issue miniseries, but we talked up the zero issue and issue number one. Um, written by Joe Casey. Good to see yeah. him him back. Illustrated by Simon Gain. Wow. 
Color art by Francesco Sigala. We've been talking about Dutch. Because it's a really, really good book. It is. And it's about to get even thicker. Um, but the last time we checked in, um, Dutch is trying to find Gehrig, um, the head of Cybertech. And he's gonna, he wants to take him out. He wants to end this crap forever because the zero issue, they invaded his property and his, his, his solitude, his sanctum. And now he's pissed. They brought it to him. He's going to bring it to them. And in the, in uh, issue two, he's using that Cybertech issued arm to track Garrick. He's, he's basically using their own creations against them. And much more of the same. He's chewing through waves of Cybertech drones and, uh, he heads to a Blood Squad 7 safe house, a very high-profile uh, media darling super team of which he was a member at one time. And uh, in the safe house, there is a guardian, a massive cybertech serpent. And he throws down with the serpent and destroys it. And then he heads out to Sao Paulo to confront Garrig head-on. So he's tracking him with that arm, hopefully for the last time. But he's not the only one tracking because Erica and her team is tracking Dutch. So the the the, the fight goes down. It's 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 Gehrig versus Dutch and they're beating the crap out of each other and he rips off or Gehrig rips off Dutch's cybernetic arm and he makes a revelation. And this I, I thought this was a really cool twist. Gehrig wants to die. Wants he's done with it. He, he he wants out of this crusty CPU and a creaky frame, and he wants Dutch to take him out. He wants to go to a better place. And so Dutch is about to oblige him of his witch... <laughs> Freudian slip. Of his wishes. I almost said witches, because it would have made sense, because there's a line in the book called, Make it witchy. <laughs> it's great. Uh, but Dutch is aided by someone. From his past, out of the shadows walks a woman. Someone that's going to appear in the forthcoming Blood Squad 7 comic by Casey and Paul Fry, which is shipping May 22nd. See, this Dutch comic, we didn't know it going in, but it's a setup mini, which is going to lead to another series. I love that stuff. When it's not entirely beholden to the thing that comes after, but it just teases the thing a little bit. Like, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. Because you don't have to read the Blood Squad 7 comic. The Dutch miniseries begins with zero and it ends with three. It's done. Finished. So if you want a complete story, don't hesitate getting this, this miniseries. It's the trade paperback. I think it was solicited already. But if not, you know where you can get it, cheapgraphicnovels.com, when it comes up. So Erica and company stroll in to pick up the pieces, literally. They, they salvage Gehrig's head, which was removed from Gehrig's body, and they, once, they plan on sucking all of the data out of it. They're going to copy all the data, and she's actually going to give him what he wanted. She's going to upload his consciousness to the net, where he can live forever. <laughs> until a specially designed virus eradicates him permanently. So she's going to give him a taste of immortality and then the virus is going to do its thing once it uh, once a little trigger's flipped and it's going to destroy him utterly. Um, like the book we're going to talk about next episode, this thing ping-pongs between the the old soldier monologue and the lone wolf soliloquy. Like, I love it. When, first of all, I love first person narration. Love it. And this is Dutch basically lamenting the fact that he's getting old and he, you know, can't do many of the things that were easier for him in the past. Um, he's also very, a very solitary individual, as we've seen in the Zero Issue. He's out in the, the desert by himself, just wanted to get away from everything. And then somebody comes in and shits on his party. But it plays out like a Garth Ennis story. Mm -hmm. 
doesn't it? Like you, you got the, the 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 war toy. Just oh man, I just wish this was over. I want to end this forever and and just hopefully go back to being alone. Fuck these people. I'm done with it. I just want out. Um, but the, again, one of the the things that should get you in the door is Simon Gaines' art. It is absolutely amazing. I think he was a great choice for this. Um, and Sigala, the colors are beautiful. There's um, Gain does a number of cityscapes, and in the sky area, Sigala does this textured thing, this textured, you know, um, very flowy color thing that I think is just beautiful, and it works really well with the rigidness of architecture, and then you have this lush kind of dappled um like clouds at dusk yeah it's gorgeous really but i mean you wouldn't and um there's i still see a lot of corbin in simon gain mm-hmm. he he does his characters are, are oftentimes blocky and thick and well not as thick as corbin's but i mean in that in that um neighborhood i just thought it was wonderful and i did not expect any of this when this was solicited like i thought they were going to do a, a local man thing and do the the 90s pastiche by the numbers this is anything but it's it's a character from the 90s who has age to the present day and i love that it's really good so keep an eye out for the trade dutch dab did you like the last two issues i really really did yeah I did. yeah i uh i and again the third one went by it, it it moves. It, it's you know once um once Dutch comes face to face with Gehrig and and they have their knockdown pull apart. It it's a uh, there's there's action there, and then there's the cleanup. And but it it's it's all it's all well done. Whether uh, whether you've got um betrayal or backstabbing i mean it's 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 political in spots but it's it's designed to be uh this um uh, she's you know he's not really dealing with anybody like amanda waller but but this young lady uh can handle her her, her she her definitely handles a team so um yeah i think i think i'll definitely uh check out blood squad seven at least first issue um I mean, I'm sure we'll get the preview for it anyway, so that's not difficult. I like Paul Fry, so yeah, we'll um, we will um, like you said, this is a complete standalone story if you just want it like that. But uh, there's it, uh, it does close the book. Yeah, it yeah. could. Well, let's just put it in in what we know about comics. It could be the last word on this character. If it is, it would be a fitting retirement for dutch maybe yeah. he'll be back in 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 the the next series or another who knows but if it's sta- if it, this is where it stands and it, they leave it alone it's a nice little ending i think yeah yeah definitely yeah no i i i uh there's another one where i was just like tried it on a whim and and it uh the payoff was worth it i uh I did. I, uh, I had got a bigger kick out of it than I expected to. Fun stuff. Yes. All right, set them up. What do we got? Uh, we got. So I did um, check out. Uh, we got the preview from Dynamite. It came out this week. Of Space Ghost number one. Um, by David Peepoys and Jonathan Lau. Andrew Dollhouse on colors, Tyler Esposito on letters, and if you, it, it's it's if you are a fan of the Space Ghost cartoon, uh, there's I, I am, and I didn't really know. Um, I didn't. I didn't read any solicits or anything like that before this. I just we 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 got the link for the first issue and I I grabbed it and um, and I really did like the art. Um, but what I what 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 I found interesting and and I'm not I'm not turned off by it at all 
is that uh, basically we're being introduced to um, Jan and Jace like right off the bat. Uh, and Blip. And Jay and Jay's father. Uh, for a minute at least. And we're getting a lot more backstory in these first couple of issues about this universe than uh, than the the years of Space Ghost cartoons I, I ever watched. But um, it is a violent first issue. Um, the uh, the aliens um, look way more menacing than they ever did uh, on the cartoon. But um, there are a couple of panels where it looks like Space Ghost can manipulate and, and alter his mass and uh, and and bulk up a bit, but the him dealing with uh, with with the bad guys um, <laughs> like like Brack uh, were a, and, and even even Brack um, and and his fellow Captain Sisto um, they look. The, the, the way Loud draws them, I, I they're definitely not characters that uh, that I'd want to meet in, in in a dark alley. But the uh, once Jan and Jace are in trouble and and they're trying to run, find a safe place to hide. Um, and something keeps getting in the way of, of, of them accomplishing that. Uh, that's when we finally see Space Ghost. He leaps into action. Um, and he is uh, he's he's doing his best to, to save the day. We get we, we, we get his gauntlets in action. Um, we get uh, he's, he's not he's not completely he's not omnipotent. He, he's uh, he's getting some he's taking his looks as well as giving them. Uh, there's a uh, there's a hell of a uh, of a kidney punch that, uh, that that he lays in on Brack, but um, it's not it's not a super doesn't really end on, on a super happy note, but it definitely sets the stage for the uh, the characters we're familiar with the main characters we're familiar with from from the cartoon. Uh, I am interested to see. I'm going to check out the second issue just to see where where, where we're going with this. Uh, I am. Um, I thought the uh, I, I I'm not the biggest Dynamite fan, so I, I tend to um, you know, aside from the James Bond stuff from time to time, I huge grain of salt when when I'm checking out their books. But uh, this I I enjoyed this first issue more than I enjoyed the Thundercats first issue, um, and however you land on. If you've read that issue, if you've read the first issue of that series, depending on where you land on it, that that, that may either mean something or nothing. But I um, I like the design of Space Ghost. I'm sure we can thank Alex Toth for that. But uh, yeah, to 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 see a comic in in, in this type of um, setup, the way this one is, uh, I, I thought it was a um, a neat take on the character. I mean, we've, we've seen so many grim and gritty versions of so many characters from back in the day. Um, but for some reason I, I didn't mind it here. So I am curious to know, um, I know our, uh, our pal Bill Z double dipped. He couldn't wait. So he wanted to read it. Um, curious to hear what our boy Cliff has to say about it. But yeah, I, um, for, for, for the people that I know that are massive space ghost fans, I am curious to hear uh, to hear their thoughts, but I do know that you guys checked it out, so I'm curious to hear what you thought. We did read it, yeah. It's kind of funny. I was laughing during the issue because I can't separate Brack and Andy Merrill. So okay. when when Brack was actually speaking <laughs> in the issue, I was I was hearing it in my my mind's ear like Andy Merrill from the the. The space goes coast to coast. Coast, coast yep, yep. Yeah, it, it was it was funny. Uh, I also I, I don't remember Jace ever incinerating anyone in no. the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. I that's thought it was. <laughs> yeah, that's the the after dark space coast. Uh, I thought it was okay. I I it, it was um, 
it was entertaining. Um, I, 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 the, there was not a, a very big takeaway with me. It, it was just another of, I thought of, of Dynamite's, um, uh, IP acquisitions and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to dump on it. I, I thought it was fine. Yeah. It's interesting that you brought up the Thundercat stat because I was like, oh, I hadn't, I hadn't compared the two, but, but after you said it, I'm sitting here thinking like, well, did I enjoy this more than I enjoyed the Thundercats? And I think for me, the issue is that going into this, I had almost no expectations, you know, like I was like, oh, whatever, like, like that's, um, you know, like, like it, I don't have some kind of massive tie to Space Coast, right, to where I'm going to have a mountainous set of expectations. Whereas with Thundercats, I love Thundercats, you know, so much as a kid that I think I had, and I had huge expectations for that comic, Mm -hmm. and it didn't deliver to that. So I kind of, like, look back on it as, like, oh, I didn't really care. Like, it was disappointing to me. But, like, objectively, if I read them both in the same day with the same set of expectations, which one I've enjoyed more, it's tough, because I didn't like the Space Coast comic very much, mainly because... It's a totally valid thing to give a serious, grimy, gritty space ghost. Like, that's obviously a very valid approach and, and somewhat novel. But I just didn't feel that, like, it didn't work for me. I'm like, I don't need grimy, gritty space ghost. Like, I, I don't, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need the, the, you know, the kids to, like, find out that the kids were, like, you know, almost, like, I, like, like, almost murdered. Like, I, like I'm like, okay, no, I don't, I can <laughs> them be silly. Like, I just need them to be silly. That's fine. Yeah. It's kind of, uh, I have a very hard, um, time dealing with a character that's separated from the aesthetic in which they were created like you take captain Mar- you take shazam captain marvel out of Fawcett city and you draw him more realistically that bothers me like the fact that this is very detailed very realistic and the space ghost that i know is very clean line alex toth styled yeah. Um, you know, delineation. So it's, it, 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 there, there's a, um, the plausible deniability is not there. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, uh, and that's my problem with DC, how they keep trying to insert Shazam into the, uh, the DC universe. And that doesn't work. If you Mm -hmm. take him out of Fawcett City, it's not Captain Marvel anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you make him more realistic, it just falls flat. I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we we are on a roller coaster this episode. Up and down, over and out. Okay. Uh, let's see where we stand. All right, everybody. Hey, remember, this episode has been brought to you by CheapGraphicNovels.com. Yep. That's CheapGraphicNovels.com where you can get all the stuff we talk about with the spine, OGNs, manga, trade paperbacks, omnibus editions for a fraction of the price. And please check out our Patreon page because it's hopping. We, uh, I'll give you the URL in case you're curious. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash 11 o'clock comics. That's one, one, no apostrophe. Uh, we recently retooled the, uh, the thing, so there's there's only two tiers, n- not a lot of heavy lifting. You get a bonus episode for the first tier, and you get a access to the Slack and the bonus episodes for the uh, the second tier. And that's it. Fun stuff. And I forgot to tell you how to save extra money at CheapGraphicNovels.com. Once you place an order, you're going to receive an email confirmation. Respond to that email confirmation saying, 11 o'clock comics sent me my good man, and you will be awarded free shipping on your next order. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing, as is this in your travels. How about that? Conceptual continuity. Speaking of the bonus episode, we recently released one to our beauteous patrons where we did a little bit of a rundown on artists that we think have lost their luster a little bit. Maybe a little bit past the prime. Um, again, it was not malicious. It was just um, a, a rundown of some of the, the guys and gals that really don't excite our eye sockets the way they used to. And one of those names was mentioned. And he happened to illustrate this comic book that I have right in front of me. 
and it's Deadpool Wolverine World War Three number one. Yes. Great. Yep. Wr- yep. Written by Joe Kelly, illustrated by Adam Kubert, yep. colored by Frank Martin. And I think this book should convince anyone that Adam has the stuff. <laughs> What do you think, Jason? 60, so, yeah, he's almost sixty, so hopefully, he, he is. People already know. Well, you about know him. what I mean. Like he still has this stuff. I thought right. this book, the the illustration going on in this book, I thought was really sharp, very uh, nice. Yeah, the, I, I think Kubert doing Wolverine feels right too. I think it's yeah, it looks great. Absolutely, yeah. a lot of mayhem, a lot of bloodshed. Um, well, of course, it's Deadpool and Wolverine, but um, it's not only great drawing; it's great layouts great panel composition i think there's some inventive play with the double page spread um i mean the pedigree on this dude is one of the finest in comics so uh of course he's going to bring some of what dad had to his books Mm -hmm. and you can see it but i thought this book was visually stunning the story was okay but i didn't really go into it for the story i went into Mm it basically to uh revisit and reacquaint myself with the work of Adam Kubert. And he made me, um, as Dap would say, he made me smile. God, it's two smiles in one episode. Yeah, it's a smile it, no, all I, over. I really, I, I really did think the issue was, was, was funny in spots as well. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, it is, yeah, no, I mean, I know we, we, or I mentioned Andy, um, on the bonus set, but Adam definitely, um, has shown us that, uh, he really, he, he still has. I, I really enjoy his figure work. I thought uh, his uh, the, watching Wolverine either jumping across rooftops or whether our heroes are flying through the air or both trying to uh, attack whichever bad guy they're after. Um, they they work well together, and I and they they're always going to do this. The, the the big two. If there's going to be a movie coming out, we're definitely going to get a, a, a team up book or or some special where we can tie it in so that when the movie hits um the, the, these issues are available for people to check out and read well at least in comic readers but uh no this this was fun i i uh once i saw that you guys were checking it out i figured let me just in case it was going to be discussed i should at least glance at it so i was, I was checking it out before the show tonight um and everything is Vince tracks it it it's an amazing looking book and it depicts Wolverine in his best costume. Yes. The no. yellow and blue. No. Yes. You were half right. No. But I, no <laughs> yellow and blue for the win. No. no. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Your travels, here, read that stuff. It's good. Yeah, they really should. Uh, go sign on that. Uh, in your travels. Um, I just had it. Oh. So another first issue, another IP, this time uh, published by Mad Cave, who apparently have a 10-year anniversary. Who knew? Uh, this is uh, this has a ton of covers, but it is written by Alex Guerra and Michael Morici from Barbaric. Uh, art by Geraldo Borges. Uh, colors by Mark Englert. Letters by Jim Campbell. It is a Dick Tracy, and it um, it takes place in 1947, right after the war. Um, oh. And we have a um, we we basically open with a uh, with a killing spree uh, where uh, where the um, the city alderman Emil Trueheart and uh and langdon marsh who's a, a crime reporter uh are meeting and whatever their meeting was about um was uh was cut short because they and every other diner in the establishment are uh, are all gunned down um dick tracy arrives in his bright yellow trench coat and fedora um tess true arrives because uh, she found out her father has been killed and uh, they don't exactly have a great first encounter. Uh, but um, she ends up needing him later on in the issue. Uh, and, um, and we get a couple 
of uh, Tracy's rogues in in this first issue. Not 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 a ton. We don't get the whole roll call or anything like that. We do see um, we see flat top. We see mumbles. Uh, but yeah, um, and and we get the head on show on the last page. I thought the art was fun. Uh, my man knows how to draw Tess really well. I, I ain't mad about that. Uh, Dick Tracy doesn't doesn't really look like anybody Terry Beatty drew in the comic strip or uh, or Warren Beatty, except on maybe one or two of the variant covers. Uh, but I thought, um, I thought for a first issue, it was a, it, it, for me anyway, it, it, it felt true to the character, to the settings. Um, we didn't, uh, we didn't get all fancy with two way wrist radio or anything like that yet. Uh, it's just pretty much a straightforward cop detective story. And, uh, and this is all kind of new to Tracy. He's not, he's not, he's not really familiar with anybody that uh any of the bad guys yet so um i'm not saying it's his year one but it's a very early in his career and uh he was a beat cop now he's a detective and um and is you know friends with the chief so uh but he is he's a man on a mission and he's not uh he's not going to take it easy or let let evil win so um i uh i'll I'll check out the second issue. I was, uh, this was one that I was pleasantly surprised with. I didn't know, I didn't know what to expect. I, it, it, these things can be a, um, a bit of a crapshoot, but, um, I, uh, I, I enjoyed this, um, I enjoyed this first issue uh, more than the previous Dick Tracy series that was out a few years ago was that mini series and parts of the stories were, from the future it was it was a weird anthology but um as far as just trying to stay true to the source material uh i think the crew did a good job here but yeah um if you haven't if you're interested if you enjoy comic strips or uh <laughs> watch the movie then uh then then you might want to check this out so yeah and you travels dick tracy from mad cave respect um I'm going to sing uh, Flesk's praises uh, because I recently received the art of Rachel and Terry Dodson. Ooh. Beautiful hardcover art book that, uh, first of all, props for having Rachel's name first because that rarely happens on comic book covers. Um, but it is, a, as you might guess, uh, another Flesk art book where we get to see the gloriousness of the Dodson's work. Um, and with all flesk, it's just, it's not just a, a beautiful book to look at, but there's great interstitial commentary from Terry and Rachel as to their approach. And, um, pretty much for almost every, most of the images are covers, um, in the book. And I would say that, uh, the vast majority you see, you see Terry's roughs, you see his, his tight pencils, then you see, um, Rachel's inks, and then you see the finished fully color, colored cover. Um, so it's great to see the process. It's very much a process book. Dap, you got to, um, when you come over for, um, before heroes, you got to check out this book because, and then see if you want to buy it because it, it is a absolute love letter to the value of an inker. Um, <laughs> so much of the discussion is about the approach and the, you know, the necessity for more, more blacks or less blacks or how, and, and, and sometimes where she intentionally leaves like, uh, like a white space outline to convey motion. Like it was just really, like to me, it was like, Oh, this is really, it, it, I came away so impressed with Rachel and frankly feeling bad because I don't know that I've ever fully thought of them as a duo. And, and that's totally wrong and sexist. But like, when I think of, like, I think of Terry drawing, right? Like I don't, but she has so much to do with the finished product, which is the images that we all say we love Terry Dotson. Like it's, she's a huge part of that image actually looking the way it looks. And uh, I loved every page of it. And just in general, man, shout out to Flesk because they have done some art, like between the Frank Cho books and the Bruce Tim books. And um, a couple months ago, we got the Art Adams book. Um, there was a Mark Schultz book a few years ago. Like, yeah. they just great, great art books for, for like true artists and, and, and do a nice job with the process. It's, it's really great stuff. And affordable. Like, you can get hardcovers or you can get softcovers for almost all these. 
So depending on your budget and all that kind of thing, it's very approachable. So yeah, shout out to Flusk. Our uh, our pal Steve Raker gave me the um, portfolio Mark Schultz book from them. Nice. Shout out. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here with us this time around. We hope you stick around because there's going to be a lot more of this coming your way. Buy some comics, read some comics, talk about them online, come back here, talk about them with us on the socials or the Slack, and uh, say goodnight, uh, Remin, uh, what, um, Fred, uh, David. Goodnight. I got to get some kind of music shit going on. Yeah. <laughs> David. Nice. Tell them you love them. And that you'll talk Love to them, them very soon. Very, very, yeah. A couple days. Soonest. That's it for that one.